All right, welcome guys. Welcome everybody to our Advanced Price Action Market Structure webinar. Thank you for joining me today. For those of you that don't know me, I am Ryan with ZenFX. Uh, I run the ZenFX uh, trade group and community, uh, as well as the ZenFX website and uh, the mentorship courses that we have there. Um, I want to welcome everybody to this webinar. Now, the point of this is that it's 2019. We have a new year. And I want to give you guys a fresh start to your trading. We want to go back and really take a look at the fundamental aspects that are key to whatever strategy or trading plan, trading rules that you might have. It doesn't matter if you are brand new to trading or if you've been trading for a while. These things are essential to any strategy. And I have uh, a lot of times when, I, uh, when I'm you know, talking to students or traders, some who have been trading for years, some who are just brand new to trading, it, is, uh, it always amazes me how many of them let these very simple, simple aspects of trading um, kind of slip through the cracks. You know, we learn this when we first start trading and then we just kind of put it on the back burner and forget about it, but this should be your starting point. Now, if you're new to Forex, um, you could have been introduced into Forex in a variety of different ways. Maybe you saw an indicator, that, like, uh, like a repainting arrow indicator that promised uh, 100 pips a day, or maybe you saw a video of some guy trading a demo account that promised you $5,000 a week or you know whatever. You know, everybody comes to Forex from a different way. I implore you to push all that to the side. If you haven't already figured out by now, that is not the way uh, for long-term profitability in Forex. And what we're going to go over today is where I think that everyone should start when they first start analyzing any Forex pair. Okay. So like I said, this, this webinar, we're going to cover the basics. Okay, this is a very basic webinar. This is not any type of advanced um, strategy or anything like that. But I think that it's going to help traders of all levels. And this is another reason why I wanted to do this webinar for you guys for free. Um, so I hope that you guys uh, enjoy it. Okay, now we've got the disclaimer in effect. Now, when we talk about you know, I mentioned very briefly indicators and strategies and different methods that people use, but those things should always be secondary to the most basic aspects of Forex. And those are the things that we're going to talk about in this four part webinar series that I'm going to be doing over the next two months. And I'm going to do one every two weeks. This is going to be webinar number one. And in this one, we're just going to talk about market structure. Okay, you need to have a very, very solid grasp on market structure before you go any further into even looking to take a trade. Okay, so we're going to go over that in as much detail as I can in an hour. You know, there's so many different aspects to it, but I want to give you guys just the most basic foundation to it. Now, the webinars that we're going to be having following, and I hope you guys join me for those as well, they're also going to be free. Again, this is just my way of trying to give back to the Forex community. Uh, we've got a really, we've got a great community, uh, big Telegram channel, big um, Facebook group. You know, I've also got Instagram channel, and we've got a ton of great traders in there. And the whole purpose is just to help you guys become more consistent and more profitable. Now, the next webinar that we're going to have, I'm going to go over major levels. We're going to talk about support and resistance. What is the proper way to draw those out? Why are they so important when we talk about looking for the entries into a trade? We're also going to cover quarters theory. Those of you that don't know quarters theory, um, it might be a little bit of an eye opener as far as um, the different levels that price reacts at, as well as the psychological levels. Why do these levels of support and resistance work time and time again? Okay. Then our third webinar that we're going to do, I'm going to talk about the one thing that everybody stresses out about the most entries. Okay. Um, 
can everyone still hear me? Uh, it looks like Daryl in the chats is not, it cannot hear me. Can everybody still hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you might want to uh, restart your Zoom. Uh, it happens sometimes, or you might not have the sound on. So our third webinar is gonna go over entries. I have a very, very specific method of taking entries. It's very simple. It's based on a three candle pattern. I will um, show you that pattern. And when I show it to you, it might as well be an eye opener of how simple just catching an entry might be once we've gotten a good level of uh, support and resistance, uh, a reaction at that level. Okay, so we're going to talk about the difference between a break versus a bounce and the all glorious retest, which is, you know, like the, the retest is like the golden, the, the golden entry for uh, most Forex strategies. Okay. And then our last webinar, I'm going to go over something that's not covered uh, until week two. So it's going to be kind of like a sneak preview of uh, the rest of the APAC course the advanced price action course. And we're going to talk about trend lines. And I'm going to talk about how 90% of the traders that are out there, you might be one of them. Uh, you're drawing your trend lines incorrectly. And there's a specific way that will allow you to get more accurate results from trend lines. It's a very, very easy fix. Most people just, you know, depending on where you learned basic price action from, uh, you just might be doing it slightly wrong. And I'm going to show you a way that will increase the effectiveness of your trend lines. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so when we talk about market structure, okay, the first thing we need to do, the very, very first thing we need to do is determine the trend. The trend is gonna be your, you know, the, you've heard it before, the trend is your friend. Now, that doesn't mean you have to trade with the trend but you must know what the trend is so you can understand what positions you're taking as far as risk to reward, whether you can hold those long term or whether you need to take them short term. So always, always, always know the type of market that you're in. That's rule number one. And I see a lot of people, um, and this is why we're going over this, is I see a lot of traders making this very, very critical mistake to where you'll get so tunnel focused on a specific method, where whether it be an EMA cross, or um, maybe you're using like a stochastic bounce, or you know something. You know, you saw a video. Someone said, "Hey, I've got this great method," and you focus too much on that method, and you completely overlook the fact that you're in the you're on the wrong side of the market, and. It'll cause you to hold your trade too long or it'll cause your trade to go in the wrong direction. And then you're wondering, you know, why isn't this working? Is because you didn't start with the most basic principle foundation and that is know what type of trend you're in and know what type of market you're in. Okay, and those are two different things. So let's talk about that. Now, market structure is made of four basic things. Okay, four, four basic things. And it's very, very simple. You have higher highs and higher lows lower highs and lower lows, okay, that's it. Everything else then becomes either a type of a trend or a type of a range, and we'll talk about that in, in just a second. But you can hear these referred to uh, by, by many different names. Um, some call these um, like a, a Bill Williams fractal, some might call these pivots, some might call them uh, swing highs and swing lows, they all, basically mean the same thing. They're all either a higher high and a higher low, or a lower high and a lower low, okay? Now, depending on the time frame that you're looking at these higher highs and higher lows, you know, these, these pivots, we'll call them, these swing, these swing points, is gonna determine how strong that trend is that you're looking at. And that can be another very, very confusing thing for new traders is, they don't know, okay, well, do I need to look at the daily? Do I need to look at the four hour? Should I look at the 15 minute? Because I can switch from the daily to the 15 minute. And on the daily, it's showing me an uptrend in the 15 minutes showing me a downtrend. Okay. We'll talk about that after we go through how we determine the trend. 
and I'm going to show you a very, very simple method uh, to determine what the best time frame for you to look at when it comes to determining the trend. Okay, there is an actual best time frame, but it's not going to be the answer that you expect. Okay, so stick around for that. We'll, we'll, we will definitely go over that. So keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, and we'll also talk about how do we look at higher highs and higher lows. So for, uh, for you in the chat, um, th and that's the thing, a lot of people get confused by them. So we'll take a look at how do we determine that, um, you know, how do we cut out what we don't need and only focus on what we do need, okay? So let's take a look at the chart really quick and we'll, we'll, we'll look at an example, okay? So this is just random chart, random chart, okay? This is a daily chart, but it still shows us exactly what we need to see. So here's a very, very easy example. Okay, this is a good trend reversal, but we start at the top, okay? You always wanna start at either the highest point or the lowest point, depending on where price is at that time. So let's say that price is uh, right about here, okay? Let's say price is about right here, and we're trying to figure out what's the market doing right now. So we scroll back a little bit. This is our highest point. And then we just go from pivot to pivot. So we can see that we have, a low, we have a higher high here. This is actually the highest high. Okay, that's your highest point. Okay, and then from there, we just go down. To here, price hasn't gone any lower than that before starting to do what we call a retrace, okay? Let me thicken this up a little bit so you guys can see it. Um, I want this one thicker. There we go. That's a little better. I'll tell you what, let me uh, bolden out that color. Good. So from here, this is where price turns around. That's our pivot point. Now we start to head back up. Now you see how price hasn't gone any higher than this. Now we start to go back down. Okay, very, very simple. And if it's confusing at all, I'm gonna tell you the thing that I tell all of my students every time, start marking up some charts. Get in there and start marking up charts, okay? Um, you know, if, if you need to ask someone's help, do that, maybe bounce some ideas off of a friend, make, make sure that they're knowledgeable in Forex, obviously. But from here, now we start to come back up. And then we start to go back down, okay? And that's how we determine our points. So we have a higher high. Now this is a new lower low. And I know you guys are asking, well, what about all this over here? We will cover that. Okay, don't get too far ahead. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna show you how do we determine if the market has reversed or not. So I know that that's one thing that confuses a lot of people and we will cover that uh, in just a couple minutes. So there's your lower low. So now this one, because it's lower than that previous higher high, that's now our first lower high, okay? And now we're starting to, excuse me, we're starting to go down, so. This becomes our lower low, and lower high, okay? Very, very straightforward. And we do the same if we were in the, you know, the opposite side of the market. So here, this is our lowest point. If we're just looking from the left side on, this is the lowest point. I'm sure there's lower points if we scroll farther to the left, but we're just looking at in this immediate area right now to determine market structure, just as an example. Okay, we're not taking a trade using this, we're just using this as an example. So we have our lowest low, and then we go higher high. This is a higher low, right up here to this highest high, okay? Very, very simple. Don't try and overcomplicate it. And then the easiest way to get the best grasp on it is just 
Start marking up charts. Marking up charts will force you to look at examples that don't perfectly fit into that box because it's not always going to. That's a higher low because it's higher than this previous low. Okay, so once we have just that basic grasp on how we determine where these four points fit into our market, into the graph, then we can make a very obvious judgment on what type of market we're in. Now there's three types of markets, technically only two, and I'm explaining what that means. There's your trending up, of, you know, and obviously that's known as an uptrend. That's the second example that we looked at. That's where the market is making higher highs and higher lows. Price is consistently moving up then pulling back a little bit, what we call a retrace, okay? And then continuing on upward. That's an uptrending market, okay? Now, historically, this is a historically documented fact. Now, it will fluctuate depending on the rules of your trading as far as your entries, your exits, um, your entry conditions, your stop loss, your take profit, things like that. But overall, in a trending market, it's historically documented that you will generally win about 80% of your trades and lose about 20 uh, as long as you're sticking to whatever you know, trade strategy that you have. It has to be a trade strategy, obviously, that works, something that you know, as long as you stick to those rules, that you win a consistent amount of time. Because we can't just trade just strictly off of market structure. I'm not insinuating that at all. This is just where our starting point before we actually start looking for our entries. So in a trending market, whether it be an uptrend or the second type of trending market, which is a downtrend, historically, you're going to win on average 80% and lose 20% of the time. And this is why trending markets are more often than not the type of market that you want to look for to start taking trades or looking for entries into. Because I have a whole section on risk management, money management, and trade management, where we base a lot of our stop loss and take profit rules as far as risk to reward ratio, where we look for at least two to one or three to one trades that over a hundred trades will lead us, leave us in a profitable position and not in a break even or maybe even a negative position, okay? Now, that's type number one is trending. I've just broken it up into two different ones, uptrend or downtrend, okay? And then the second, like if we, if we do the two types, you know, we can technically, you know, we can consider it a third type, is our ranging or our sideways market, okay? That's where price is neither moving higher or lower it does move up and down, but it doesn't breach our highest or lowest previous level. And I'll show you what I mean in an example um, in just a second. But in a ranging or a consolidating market, historically, you have a better chance of losing than you do of winning. And I've pulled this, this statistic comes from um, Manesh Patel. If you guys aren't familiar with him, um, he was one of my mentors. Uh, for learning Elliott Wave and Fibonacci based trading. Um, these statistics come from, he's been trading for over 20 years and just from his own personal experience, um, that's where I'm getting these numbers from if anybody's interested. But I found them to be very, very uh, close to correct that most of the time in a consolidating market, um, you're gonna lose a lot more than you're gonna win because you're not able to get into a trend. You're not able to get into a position and let that position ride, take profit, partial profits, stack in extra positions, and really maximize that trade. When you're in a ranging market, you're playing ping pong, and you're, it's really best only for taking really quick trades or what some people call scalping. Uh, and a lot of times you're going to be counter trend trading because there is no real trend. There's a, an overall trend that happened before the consolidation, but you don't know if it's going to turn into a continuation of that trend or eventually reverse. 
Okay, and ranging is known by a lot of different names. Um, if you're new, you're probably not familiar. But uh, for all my old traders, you know, you know these, uh, you know, you know these very well. These labels, um, they can be considered uh, a level in the market maker theory. Uh, you know, your three levels of rise, three levels of drop, um, which anybody that's ever traded that knows that it's never always three. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's five, you know, but we have those levels of rise and those levels of drop. Also, what we might consider an Elliott wave where we have our five wave um, major pattern and then our three wave uh, retracement. So um, that's if you hear these, these terms come into play, they're all just basically referencing the same thing. They're referencing a ranging market that's getting ready to move in an either up or down direction, but we just don't know yet. We're waiting for something to happen. And that's a lot of the reason as well why you're gonna have a, a lower win ratio with that because we don't know what the market's gonna do. When we're in a trending market, we have a much, much better idea of where it's possibly gonna go. And when we trade Forex, anybody that's traded even for a day, you know there's no sure thing in Forex. All we can do is trade the best possible scenario. We're, we're trading probabilities, okay? So let's take a look at a couple examples. So like I just showed in the market structure, here's a classic uptrend, okay? This is pound Swiss franc and We've got our higher high, our higher low, our higher high, our higher low, and then our highest high. Okay, and we can see this is an obvious uptrend. Now, we've got a little bit of movement here and there. Let me show you real quick here. So we got, we've got like a little bit of movement here. We've got a little bit of movement, sorry, here, here, uh, first question I get from a lot of students is, is why aren't we taking that into consideration? That is very, very important. And we're going to cover that when we get a little bit closer to the end. I don't want to confuse you just yet, but there is a reason why we bypass that. Okay. Now, if we want to look at the other side, <laughs> big arrow. So if we want to look at a downtrend, it's the same thing. Okay. This is just, just variations on a theme rinse repeat okay and start again so we have our lower low our lower high because it's lower than this previous high okay and then another lower low another lower high another lower low lower high and so on okay and each point each of these lower highs has to be lower even if it's just by a little bit than the one previous, or else, if not, then we're talking about we're talking about a range. Okay, so here's a classic example of a range on Euro Canadian dollar on the daily. So we're coming off of a downtrend, right? And we see price falling, but it hits this lower low, and comes up. So we've got now this level of support. And we'll talk about levels of support and resistance in the next webinar. But we've got this level where if it does not go lower than that, then it's no longer considered in a downtrend until that breaks, until we get a breach of that. Okay. So we put a level of support up here. And now we see it's just ping ponging in this range. It's starting to form a little bit of, of a wedge. If we were to uh, you know, draw maybe a trend line like this and a trend line up, I'm horrible at drawing with a mouse, but a trend line up like that, you know, we can see it's wider here, getting narrower here, and it's starting to really, really wedge in, okay? So, Um, I'm not sure how to hide the participant panel, to be honest with you. So, aside from that, you know, we're not too concerned with that wedge. What we are concerned with is the fact that this high here that's giving us the support level, 
you know, we're getting a tap of the wick here, we're getting a tap of the wick here, but what we're really looking at is the body of the candle. And this is one of the things that confuses a lot of new people when they try to start drawing out market structure, is you don't want to rely on the wicks. You wanna look at these bodies here, okay? The body of the candle. Well, we, the, real, the reason, the only thing we really will ever use wicks for is for drawing out maybe supply and demand zones, which is a more of an advanced technique, or um, using a very advanced technique called Fibonacci retracements. Other than that, when we're drawing our support, our resistance, or even trend lines, we want to focus on the body of the candle. Now, wicks give us a little bit of a tap as far as confirmation, validating that level, but we want to see the volume in the market of where price opened and closed. Wicks tell us where it has been, and it gives us an insight into the struggle between buyers and sellers, but the important point is where did price close at, especially when we're looking at our trading time frame, which is the time frame we will choose to take our entries and our exits on, okay? So this is a range, and now we need to decide as we're looking at a chart, are we in an uptrend, a downtrend, a range, or are we looking at an actual full reversal, okay? So let's talk about how we determine that. So once we've figured out, first of all, what we're in, like if we know that we're in a downtrend or we know that we're in an uptrend, we need to determine is the strategy or the trade or the position that we're taking with the trend or against it, right? Now, we all know the, the saying, the trend is your friend. I would highly recommend that you guys add one word to that and it's going to change your trading and that's the overall trend is the friend, is your friend, okay? And we'll talk about how do you determine the overall trend in uh, a couple more slides, okay? So we will cover that. But either way, it doesn't mean that you can't take counter trend trades, but you need to know what you are taking, whether it be a trend trade, meaning if you're in an uptrend, are you buying into that position? Are you trading with that trend, hoping that it's gonna continue going up? Or are you taking a counter trend trade, meaning you're trading in the opposite direction. And this is just one thing that I see a lot of people just skipping past and then wondering why the, the bounce off of their EMAs isn't playing out. Because they skip the very first rule of Fight Club and that's don't talk about Fight Club. No, it's that you, you don't, if you're in a counter trend trade, you don't want to be holding that position for a long time. Okay, trend trades are the trades that you can take with a high probability of success for a long term. Those can be your swing trades, maybe your intraday trades, or trades that you can hold for 50, 100, 200 pips, you know, whatever you're looking for. If you're in a counter trend trade, it's okay. I mean, if you get a good entry and you wanna take a counter trend trade, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to recognize that it, it's got a lower probability of playing out because you don't know how far that's gonna retrace which is really all you're doing. You're, you're, you're trading off of the retrace of the current trend. And you just need to know you need to get in and get out. Now, this is a, a method that most scalpers like to use where they see a bounce off of a level. It's an uptrend. They short it. They want to just catch like a quick 10 or 15 pips because they know that eventually it's going to keep going in that direction or it's going to start ranging. It's very rare and it probably will most often never happen that you're gonna catch a trade bouncing off of a major level, like if we're in an uptrend, grab my drawing tool here, that you're gonna see a trade going up like this, you're in an uptrend, and that you're gonna catch it right here and it's just gonna fall out like a Brexit vote, okay? It's very rarely gonna happen and it might, but not enough to where you can you know, formulate an entire system based off that. You will be losing 90% of your trades and your risk to reward ratio is not gonna support that, especially if you're scalping. 
So if you get in here, you need to get out here or here. Something very, very small. And then wait for that trend to continue on or at the minimum just risk it by putting a stop loss at break even. So I don't want to get into the weeds on all of that. We could talk about risk to reward ratio and um, stop losses, you know, till the cows come home. But I just want to focus mainly on knowing what direction the market is moving in and then adjusting your position based off of that. If you're with the trend, then you have a better chance of holding on to that trade for a long time. If you're against the trend, you need to grab that profit and bounce. Secure the bag, whatever you want to call it, jump out of that trade and keep it moving. Look for another entry and then try and find something that's with the trend that you could hold longer if the market keeps playing out. If you start to see it reverse, that's where we start to look for our trend reversal trade. So let's talk about how do we know if the market's going to reverse. Now, of course, we never know 100% of the time if the market is fully reversing, if it's just reversing for a short period of time, but we do have a very solid method using market structure that can give us an idea of a market starting to reverse its trend, okay? So how do we do that using just basic four points, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low, okay? so. This is the rule of thumb, and I'm gonna show you this on a chart because it's very confusing uh, for most traders in the beginning, but I'm gonna show it to you and then rewatch it as many times as you need to, but this will save your bacon on many, many, many trades. If you're in an uptrend, okay, the price must break the previous higher low and create a new lower low or a swing point above that point. And if you're in a downtrend, the price must break the previous lower high and create a new higher high or swing um, above that point, or I'm sorry, below that level, below that level, okay? And I know, I, I know that just confused a whole bunch of people. Let me show it to you on a chart and it'll make a ton more sense. And then we'll take a look at it on actual chart, okay? So if we're in a downtrend, here's our downtrend. We've got our higher highs, our higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, or well, in a downtrend, we just have lower highs and lower lows, okay? So let's go back to that. So in a downtrend, it must break the previous lower high and create a new higher trend. So when price reaches its lowest point, which is this right here, okay? For it to start creating a new trend, an uptrend, now it can range like this, okay? But until it breaks out of this box, if it breaks below, then we're looking at a continuation. If it breaks above, then we're looking at a possible change in direction, and we won't get that validated until we get our ever holy retest, okay? Now, we might not always get a retest, but that just gives it the final seal of approval that yes, we're good to start looking for long trades. So, we've got our lower high. This is our lowest low. This will be our reversal point if these conditions are met. So, that's our most previous lower high. It has to be to the left of this lowest low. It can't be the next lower high because there's always a possibility, okay, that it could come up like this, like range, and then start moving up. It's not this, okay? It has to be to the left of this point, the lowest, lowest point, okay? Has everybody got that? So when we see price start moving up, it has to break through that level first, and then this is where it needs to create a new higher low above this. Now, it's possible to come through and break this and do what we call a false break. That is possible, but we need to have at least one swing low above that level, and then we can assume at that point that we're in an uptrend. 
okay? Time frame doesn't matter. Uh, time frame is going to be relevant to how you're trading, and we'll talk about that. Uh, which time frame should we be looking at uh, in just a second? So st stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm going to tell you exactly which time frame. But for right now, let's just assume that we're trading on the one hour, or we will be looking at the one hour time frame and judging the trend off of that. Okay. So once it pulls back and it can either touch this level or not. You know, it can either retest this level or maybe it just does a little bit of a pullback and keeps going. But the whole point is it makes a swing low, a new higher low, and continues on. Okay, now we're in an uptrend. Okay, that's how we look for trend reversal using just simply market structure, just very, very simple market structure. Now, if we're in an uptrend, it's obviously the opposite. We've got market structure going up it starts to pull back down. We don't know, is this maybe forming a inverted head and, or a head and shoulders pattern, or is it just doing a deep retrace and then continuing on? So we have this previous higher low, and we have our highest high. That's gonna be our possible reversal point, and it's not confirmed until we see the breach of this previous higher low, and it either pulls back and retests it, or just pulls back and forms a new lower, lo, um, lower high here. That's our new lower low, and then this is our new lower high. And again, by swing point, I just mean, like if we have candles, we have one candle flanked by two lower candles, and it does a swing, that's a swing high, or a swing low. It's just the opposite, like a little smiley face. Okay, just basic pivot point. Okay. Um, yes, yes, we will. There, I will. Uh, this is recording, and I will upload this uh, to YouTube so you guys can rewatch it as many times as you need to. Because I said this is a very, very confusing point for a lot of traders. But if you just do some chart markups, work through this, practice it a couple times. Um, look at it on live charts, uh, then you know it'll become much, much clearer and you'll be able to start seeing these reversals for what they are. Because if this doesn't get stopped by this level and it continues on up, then all we have is really just, like if this just keeps going, then all we have is just a, a wider range here. You know, and that that we're talking about a little more of an advanced technique, but basically, we need for there to be a swing high underneath this, this level somewhere. Once that forms, then we can start looking for short trades as a higher probability setup than a long trade. And it, it could be short-lived, it could be just a very uh, short, you know, maybe it makes a little level, because um, if we're doing like an Elliott wave, we've got one, two, three, four, five, uptrend, and then it could be just an exhaustion uh, a retracement wave, um, you know, the three waves of retracement, and then could continue on up. But at, while we're still in this area, we want to be looking for short trades because as long as it's still moving down, that is our best possible trade scenario. Okay. Now, of course, it's not that simple. I will never lie to you guys and tell you that it's just as simple as doing market structure. If it was, and horses were wishes, we would all be cowboy millionaires, right? But what we're doing is are the first step in basic top-down analysis to at least give us an idea of the most of the very first question that everyone should be asking themselves: uh, Do I go long or do I go short? Okay. And if the trend is on your side, that's the one you want to go with, and then start looking for those either long setups or short setups. And that's you know we've got more analysis that you need to do, but you should be doing this. Very, very first, okay, because the trend is the most important thing to take into consideration when you're looking for your trade ideas. And that's this one is a classic lower high retest. And we call it retest because it retests that level of what was once support now becomes resistance, and everything this becomes our stop loss level of where we want to place our stop just slightly above and 
It gives us a good idea of how we can manage our risk to reward. Okay. Now, this is a good example of trend reversal here. This is on a live chart. It's very easy with lines, but it's a little bit more difficult when you start looking at candles because like I said, the wicks can start to throw you off. But we start with our downtrend. We've got a lower high, lower low. This is the most recent lower high. And that's because these points have not been breached yet by this little retrace here. Okay, because the first thing people look at is like, what about this? And what about this? It's not above that and it's not below that. It's still in this little bit of a range. So we wait, we wait until either this level gets broken or this level gets broken. Because if this were to, let's say from right here, breach up, okay, then we would be looking at this point as our lowest high, the most recent, because this would be the lowest point. But we don't get that. We get price continuing downward, and this becomes our lowest point. Okay, so these levels are invalidated. They don't matter anymore. We delete them from our chart. We look at this level here, and we wait to see if that gets broken or not. Okay, and in this scenario, obviously we can see that it does. We have price coming down, makes that lowest low. We set our resistance level that must be broken through before we wanna start looking for long trades because we get a test of it here, price gets rejected. The level holds. So we're not looking for a long trade yet. We're waiting. Right now we're in a bit of a range. Okay, price comes up, price comes back down. Then we get our break. And here's a great example of it doesn't come back to retest the level. It, again, it, it's not always gonna do that. What we're looking for though is this swing low. This swing low now has been formed. It's a very small pullback, but it is a pullback nonetheless. Now we're looking for long trades, okay? and. These will, these just basic market structure formations, for those of you that have been trading for a while, you'll notice that these start to form our key market patterns for reversals and continuations. This right here, quick test, what is this pattern that price action has formed uh, just right here? Can anybody name this pattern? I know you guys can. It's a, it's a very, very common chart pattern. What do we see here? Got a bit of a boom. There we go. Yep. At, no, not a double bottom because we don't have everything on the same level. You're exactly right. This is inverted head and shoulders. We've got our left shoulder here. We've got our head here. And then this pullback was our right shoulder. And for those that trade that pattern, we know that we look for the break of the neckline, which this blue line then forms the neckline, because I don't want to get too much into advanced stuff. But for those of you that are familiar with it, the most common way to trade a inverted head and shoulders is to wait for the breach of that neckline. Okay. Now, we have other methods that we use that give us a much, much tighter entry into this type of a, of a trade. Um, this is one of the great times where using Fibonacci is just clutch when it comes into looking for um, these type of early aggressive entries. But the very, very conservative entry is you wait for this breach and maybe drop down to a lower time frame uh, or maybe wait until this pullback and enter. Okay, so market structure is what's going to give us those patterns that everybody looks for, um, especially like if you've ever tried using the market maker method. I, I started my trading career trading the market maker method for six solid months. Um, it wasn't for me. It just doesn't fit my trading style, which is very, that's key, is always finding something that fits the way that your mind works. You know, it may work for somebody else, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. You have to find out what works for you. But this is a very, very obvious inverted head and shoulder pattern. And then once we get that breach of that neckline, now we know this is a reversal pattern. Let's start looking for long trades.
okay? So you see how this all plays together, but it starts with recognizing basic market structure and basic trend. And then that's what's gonna, so we get that break. Oh, of course, I have a little more animation going on, <laughs> right? And then that's our new higher low, and now we're starting our new uptrend. So, and that leads me into that, that this structure gives us the basis for the, the main trading patterns that I highly encourage most new traders to stick to. Now you're gonna learn a lot of different patterns along the way, like pennants, triangles, wedges, flags, you know, all that stuff. If you don't know them now, believe me, you'll run across them eventually. Um, you know, go through babypips.com or maybe go through the free price action course that we have on the website. It's like a whole, I have a whole course that's 100% free on the YouTube channel. You guys can take any time you like if you're just starting out. It's like baby pips, only in video format for people that get kind of uh, ADD when it comes to just reading computer screens. But we have our Fibonacci retracements that um, are the pullbacks for our higher, higher highs and our higher lows, okay? That's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it also shows us our double tops, which are our Ms, um, which is what I was talking about with the market maker method. That's like a, um, a, a staple of the market maker method is finding intraday or intercession M's and W's, double tops and double bottoms. And then, you know, that you have a lot of indicators that give you confluence with like the TDI, um, things like that. Um, divergence is one of my favorite, but these double tops and double bottoms start with market structure. And then you're taking the break of that neckline which is also what we just looked at. If that left shoulder and the head of this previous had been at the same level, then it would have been a double bottom, like that, or maybe even a triple bottom. But either way, we'd still be looking for the break of that neckline to trade, okay? So it, it doesn't matter how you then end up applying market structure, it still is going to start with market structure, which is why this is the first thing I wanted to cover in this webinar series, okay? And then we also have our head and shoulders, or as we just saw, inverted head and shoulders. And then a lot of other chart patterns fall into that, but like what I was trying to say is that if you're new to trading, stick with head and shoulders, double tops, and double bottoms. Just stick with that for the first six months and don't worry about the rest of it until you get further on because a little bit of a trader inside secret, those of you who have been trading for any number of years will agree with me on this hopefully, that most other chart patterns look great in hindsight, but they rarely play out the way that we are taught in, um, you know, like baby pips modules where we see a, a pennant forming and then it's, oh, it's gonna break out to the top and go the full distance of the flagpole you know, don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, we're taught a very specific way that patterns are supposed to play out. They hardly ever do. They hardly ever do. And when they do, it's you know, just by sheer luck sometimes. But double tops, double bottoms, and head and shoulders um, are very, very reliable chart patterns that you can base just a simple price action strategy around. Okay. So, I told you I wanted to get into some pro tips. So here is some more, some of the advanced tips. Now that we've covered the basics, I want to cover some, a couple advanced things that I found just through my own trading. Um, I mean, for those of you who don't know me, I've been trading for over five years, full-time for three, and just through my own personal experience and the experience of uh, many of my students, that this is uh, one, uh, you know, a couple things that I think will actually help if you've been trading for a while or if you're new, uh, tweak, what we've just learned, okay? So, pro tip number one, and this is what I told you we'd talk about uh, about you know, 20 minutes ago. Don't get distracted by small moves, pullbacks, or pauses in the market when you're trying to determine market structure. Don't get caught up in the minutia of movement. So, what does that mean? Let's take a look at a chart. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So, when we're, let me do it take drawing tool off. Now let's take a look at, let me see if I can find one that is a good representation. So yeah, yeah, here is, here's a great one. Okay. So when we're looking at something like this, like this market structure, 
if when you get a lot of pullbacks, let me get the uh, drawing tool out. Okay, so we're starting here. Now, when you get a lot of pullbacks, um, it's uh, very common for a lot of traders, new traders to do like this. Okay, they're, they're trying to catch every single last candle movement. That's a mistake, okay? You don't need to do that. A lot of that you need to just brush aside and let go. There's really only two um, things that you need to look for, okay? You, you need to look for your lowest point, obviously, or your highest point. And then you need to look at every time there's a pivot formed, do you get a significant pullback or breach of that next pivot level? You know, it can't be just one candle. Okay, so like, oh, uh, where's a good example? You know, like we have this here, you know, and then we get one more candle here. You know, do I make two points? No, no, you do not. You, oh, I don't want that. You just make one, okay? If I'm, if I'm drawing this out and I have like say here and then we get this little bit of pullback. I mean, you can draw this out and make more, you know, but it just starts to really get confusing, especially if you're on like a 15 minute chart, you know, and you're doing this and this and this. Let's zoom into this really quick. I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so the problem is um, once we get to this point, and I know it's not the best example in the world, but when you get to your first swing high and your, you know, your new higher high and your new higher low, unless these levels get breached, Okay, then it's really just ranging and you can ignore it. Okay, so you see here, we have price, it comes up and it does break above. So for that, I will, I'll just take this and just move it up to here. And this will all be one movement. Because when it comes back down, it doesn't go any lower. So I'll just make that my most recent higher low. Okay. And then we continue on. And in that aspect, in that case, you know, you just keep going, right? But these points have to be higher than the last point. This low has to be higher than this low. This high has to be higher than that high. And if they're not, then you don't include it in your market structure. So let's look at the next example and it's, it'll show you exactly what I mean. So if we're going from here to here, Okay, my next swing high has to be higher than that point or I just don't pay attention to it. I just let it go, okay? And same for the swing low. So when we get our swing low formed, okay, comes down to here and then this next point, it's not higher, I let it go. This next low, is not lower than this point. So I let that go because it's in this little sideways channel. Very, very small. It's a very, very tight range, but it's not a continuation of the trend. This next high, it's not higher. So I let it go. Sorry, I should put this up here just so you guys can be a little bit better of a visual tool. Now this next low, it absolutely is a little lower. So I'll adjust that. It basically widens out this range because you're going to have to be doing this in real time. Then still no breach, still no breach, still no breach. Okay, we're here, no breach, no breach, no breach. Then we get this kind of movement. So then that's when we mark out our next higher high. And the levels get reset. This is just a little bit of a false break. So it's pretty much the same level. <clears throat> but we just keep going sideways, and this is just another very, very tight range, but we do have a lower low, and then it shoots up. 
And then, so we have a new higher high, now we have a new higher low. And unless it breaches these levels, as you can see, it just kind of ranges until we get new higher high and a new higher low. Okay, so instead of this type of a, of a market structure, learn to let that the smaller amount of movement go. You're looking for the overall larger movements. You want big pushes and pulls. Okay, the small things, that's just smaller hedge funds trading in. It's not the big money that you want to be paying attention to. You want it to be very, very clear lightning bolt type of patterns. Okay, so that's pro tip number one is let those smaller movements go. They're not relevant um, unless they're breaking through these levels in a major way and giving you nice clear pullbacks, then it's just chop, chop, consolidation. Wait until it's clear. And when it's clear, you'll know. Okay, it'll be very obvious. So if it's not obvious, then more than likely, it's not what you want to be paying attention to. Okay, so that's tip number one. That's just one of the biggest things that I see, the biggest mistakes I see new traders make. They get too caught up in the little small movements, and those small movements are inconsequential. They're irrelevant to us really trying to focus on the main trends. Okay, yeah, no worries, no worries. I'll, I'll catch you on the recording. Um, so that's number one. Okay, and that's just going to come through practice and repetition. And it'll also come through, sometimes you will pay attention to those movements, you'll take trades, and you'll get stopped out. And then later on, you'll realize that it wasn't really a movement at all. And one of the best ways to measure those out is with a Fibonacci tool, but that's far more advanced for, you know, to get into at this point in time. You know, we really look for at least 50% or more when we're using a Fib uh, to really qualify it as, an, as a pullback or a continuation. All right, next, I'm going to give you a simple three trade checklist, one of which we've covered uh, today. The others we will cover in the next couple webinars, but no matter what trading style or indicator or template or what have you, whatever you use, make sure you have these three things done first before you do anything else. And I guarantee you it will greatly increase your win-loss ratio. It will make you a much, much more consistent trader. And it's very, very simple. First thing is just identify the trend. Okay. Just like we've done today, look at the market structure. It'll take you two to three minutes tops. It should sometimes just be very, very obvious. Look for whether you're in either a trending market or a consolidating market. If you're in a consolidating market, look for a different pair. Look for something that's giving you an obvious momentum and then look to take a position on that. Okay, that's number one. So you look at your pair, determine the trend, and then figure out how you're going to trade it from there. Number two, identify your major levels. And we will go over this um, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that. It's going to be in webinar number two. We're going to talk about major levels. Not just small little levels of support and resistance, but ones that are respected historically over and over again on higher time frames. Because again, the higher the time frame, the stronger the level. And when we work with very, very strong levels, we have a much, much higher chance of catching a successful entry. So once we know we're in an uptrend, we need to know where's the major level of support and the major level of resistance both below and above where price currently is so that we know where we might want to put our stop loss, where we might want to put our take profit or where we might want to look for an entry. Okay. So we'll go over that in much, much greater detail in the next webinar. So definitely join us for that. And then third is identify your trading timeframe. So the question had come up earlier, what time frame should we look at? And I had told you guys, I was going to tell you, exactly which time frame to to uh, to watch and which one you know which one you need to determine the trend on and the answer is of course not what you're going to expect you're going to expect me to say daily you should always look at daily or or you should always look at h4 or always it's relevant only to what your trading time frame is 
Okay, and we're going to talk about that also in future webinars. Um, I go into great detail, not only using this for price action, but we uh, we use this as a gospel rule when we're trading Renko's as well. You want your time frame to sync up with the time frame that's directly above you. Okay, you want to trade with people that have more money than you. I know it sounds so simple, but so many people just forget that concept that the people with more money than you are moving the market. And if you're not trading with them, you're trading against them. And that's what's going to crush you time and time and time again. So why not make it simple? Trade with the people that are bigger than you. So what do we do? What we do is we determine what type of time frame we are going to trade on. That's our TTF, our trading time frame. And then we want to trade with our major player. That's just a term that we use in, in the course. It's just kind of a, a way to remember we need to trade with larger money, whether it be institutions, hedge funds, banks, um, or maybe just people with a, a PAM account, you know, to, to, you know, whatever your flavor. But you want to trade with those people. So the example is simple rule of thumb. Trade one time frame above the time frame or look at the trend on the time frame one trend one frame above your trading time frame okay so if you're trading the 15 minute look at the one hour for the trend and make sure that those two trends either line up or that you're trading at least in that direction okay so let's take a look at a chart really quick i'll show you what i mean okay this is very very important and it's going to save you many 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 times so we're here on the EuroCAD. If we're trading, let's say on the one hour, okay, there we go. So if we're trading on the one hour time frame, I've got the hour time frame pulled up. That means that we're probably swing traders, that we're looking to hold a position maybe um, at least a couple sessions, if not for a couple days. Then the time frame that we want to determine the trend on is going to be you're very welcome, George. I'll see you in a bit. Um, is going to be the four hour. I mean, I know there's different time frames you can choose on TradingView, but typically our bread and butter is 15 minute, one hour, four hour daily. Okay, unless you're a positional trader, you're probably not gonna be trading on the daily, uh, holding for like weeks at a time. So if you're trading on the one hour, then you wanna look at what's the trend on the one hour. So let me scroll all the way to the side, because I wanna look at, because when I drop down, I don't want it to just completely. There we go. And this, oh great, perfect example. EuroCAD's in a downtrend right now as we speak on the one hour. Okay, so we've got our lower high, our lower low. We could even do this, it's fine. Lower high, lower low, lower high, dropping down. Okay, just to make it visually simpler. I probably wouldn't even pay attention to this, but since it made a little bit of a swing high, um, I might use it as a resistance level. Again, we'll talk about that next time uh, where I might want to put maybe my stop loss, but it was a good break and a retest. So we're on, we're in an obvious downtrend on the, on the one hour. Okay. If this is what we're trading, we want to jump up to the four hour and confirm that. If we're still in a downtrend on the one hour, on the four hour, we're good to look for short entries. And sure enough, we are, because if we see market structure, again, you see how quick this goes. We just do it like this. I don't even pay attention to this little bit over to the left. We got higher high, higher low, and then this is our highest high. So what do we need to be, be you know, lower than to ensure that we're in a legitimate downtrend. We need to be lower than this most recent higher low. And you see that we've done that. We had a, a retest of it. The level held, came back up, and came back down. And then look at that. That little swing point that I had pointed out earlier was, our, was the swing high that we needed to confirm this downtrend. And so that's what I mean by these are synced up. The four hour and the one hour are synced up. The major player is your four hour. 
he's in a downtrend. He's selling. The major player is selling. You want to sell right along with him. Okay. So then you just drop back down to your one hour and then you start looking for making sure that your one hour is also in a downtrend, which it is. And that's where you start looking for your entries. Okay. And here was that little retest there. And of course it always looks a little bit different on the one hour, but that's where you're going to get your more precise entries. And then if you want to get like sniper like entries, maybe you drop down to the 15 minute. And if the 15 minute is on a downtrend as well, which is pretty obvious that it will be, then you look for a good break, re sorry, break and a retest entry, or, you know, just depending on what your strategy is, find your strategy's entry point on that time frame, And then that's where you take your short trade. Okay. So it's a, a very simple, but not simple answer. So there's no single time frame that you should be looking at. You should just be looking at the level that's one above you and making sure you're trading in that same direction. So if it's ranging, look for another pair. Now, if it looks like it's in a downtrend, so when we were here and price hadn't exactly broken yet, maybe we, it looked like we were in a downtrend on the four hour or in, it's still in an uptrend on the four hour, but on the one hour, we had already broken through the last um, swing low, which was this. Right? So technically, we're in a downtrend already on the one hour. Then you're going to want to wait. It's just a little bit riskier. You could still take a short trade, but it's riskier trade until we get the breach of this major support level. And you can see here, it did pull back. It pulled back in a major way. This is another place where we throw on a fib and we're like, okay, well, how much of a retrace was that? Almost to 50%. Okay, so we're looking at a nice retrace. Um, and if we get a break of that level, we could see a very, very good continuation of that downtrend. And once we get that, you know, we can take that aggressive entry, but it's going to be much, much more probable that it will play out once we get beyond that level there. Okay, because then we know we've got market structure on our side. Okay, so that's just another pro tip. And then the last, and this is just a, um, something that I think everybody should throw on there. If you get confused, if for some reason you're just not sure um, if you're in an uptrend, if you're in a downtrend, or it's just maybe it's ranging and you're just, uh, you're just not sure for whatever reason what the... Um, the trend is that you're looking at the 200 EMA is by far my favorite EMA. Uh, again, it's like a golden level when we trade Renko's because it just time and time again gets respected as a dynamic level of support and resistance. So when we have flat lines, those are static levels because they don't move. They're just flat horizontal. Now, when we get an EMA in there, Okay, now you see how it's dynamic because it moves with price. It curves. Okay, it's, it's like a real woman. It's got curves. And as we can see here, that's a great example. Look at how this, it got a, li a little bit of a false break. Nothing in Forex is ever going to stop on a dime for you, but it did get respected. It struggled. It could not stay above that 200, and then it broke down, and when it broke down, it just kept going. So the 200 EMA is always a good thing to use as an, um, just a, maybe a, a final indication if you're not sure. And the rule of thumb is if price is above the 200, okay, then you're still technically in an uptrend. And when it's below the 200, then you're in a possible downtrend. Okay, it's very simple. Just whatever side of the 200 that it's on, look for clues to let you know that the market is heading in that direction. Okay, as, you know, it's not 100%, but it does help you if you're slightly confused when you're looking at the market as just a general, like, quick rule of thumb. Where's the 200? You know, if we're taking a trade here, down here, after that break of support now turned resistance, then, yeah, that's just extra confluence that we're on the right side of the market. Okay. All right, guys. So, as I said, um, I'm going to be doing these webinars uh, over the next two months. I'm going to do one every two weeks. This first one on market structure, ka-ching, 
done. That's, uh, that's all we've got for market structure. Uh, the one in two weeks is going to be on major levels, support resistance, quarter theory, which is really cool stuff, psychological levels. We want to talk about why do these levels get respected, okay? And then we're going to talk about entries, which everybody focuses way too much on because entries are really not what make you profitable. Um, it's your, your, your money management, your trade management. But I know a lot of new traders tunnel focus on, I got to get the best possible entry. I want to go right into profit. You know, good luck with that. But I will give you some great tips on how to get better entries. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. And then uh, week four, we're going to go over trend lines. Okay, so that's what to... Hopefully you guys can join me for those. If you enjoyed this webinar, I really hope that you guys got something out of this. Just, I want to do these to help you guys get 2019 off to a great start. You know, I want us all to really kill it in 2019. And, you know, I think if you just add these little things into it, it's really going to help you guys a lot. Okay, webinar bonus. So you guys, uh, I promised that you guys, uh, I would give you free access to uh, the APAC course. And I absolutely will do that. So here's how you can get, um, oh great, I'm, re I'm really glad that you guys are liking this stuff. Like I said, I wanna do more of these for you guys, so absolutely. Um, so this is how you guys can access all of the week one videos in our advanced price action course. If you like the way that I teach, if you like the way that I trade, if you're looking to get some type of mentorship, um, you know, I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Is it necessary to get a mentor? Not really. I mean, you can do this on your own, but a lot of people find that their first two years are not profitable in Forex because it's a lot of trial and error. And sometimes guidance can really kind of help you fast track you to becoming more consistent a lot quicker. So uh, to get access to the first four uh, videos and just see if it's something that you might want to uh, enroll in. Uh, I'm, I have it open. I opened it before we started up the webinar. You guys can actually go there right now and it should be open. If it's not, somebody please let me know and I'll see if uh, the webmaster has to do something else. But all you have to do is go to the website, zenfxtrading.com, and just sign up, register for a free account. Just register your email for a free account. That way um, you can log into the site and get access to all the free stuff that I have on there. And then there's a free course trial button on the home page. Just click on that and it will take you. Also, I decided to throw in a couple other things for you guys. I'm going to give you guys access to all of the ar archived student webinars that I've done over the past year. I think there's like 20 or 30 webinars. They're all at least an hour long. So good luck trying to get through all of those within a month. But we talk about a lot of advanced things that are in the course, and I'm sure you guys will be able to find at least some, um, some great stuff in there. And then, uh, and one extra free gift for you guys, just because you guys are awesome. That's good. I'm really glad to um, hear that you guys in the chats are really getting a lot of good stuff out of this. So if you go to our website, okay, I've added this free course trial button on here. All you guys need to do is click on that and that will take you straight. We have to register an account, obviously. You just need an email and a password. And then here is all of our week one videos. Don't worry about the homework. Um, homework is for students that have mentorship, but it just kind of gives you an idea of the type of homework that I have you guys do to make sure that you have these uh, concepts down 100% before. Uh, moving you on to more advanced stuff. Um, and then these are really, they're going to go over everything that we're going to go over in the free webinars over the next couple months. Not in as great a detail. I'm really going to try and hit some of the finer points in the webinars so you'll be able to get a lot of value out of both. And then the free bonus, uh, you guys can download a free copy of the Quarters Theory uh, PDF file. It's a really great book. Uh, talks about psychological levels. And then I also have a, a little quarter levels indicator that you can throw on your MT4 platform. And it, it's just a free thing. You, know, you can find it anywhere for free. But if you don't have it already, just throw that on your MT4. Draws out all of the major and minor quarter levels so that you know when price is getting close to that. And um, it'll definitely help um, if you're tr let you know kind of if your trades are setting up with what everybody else is doing at that time. And then down here at the bottom is the archived webinars button. Click on that, 
Um, and then, yeah, here are all the webinars going all the way back to March of last year. And we go over a lot of time, you know, we go over a lot of stuff. I guess it's not as many as I thought, but there's quite a few. And hopefully you guys will get a lot of um, uh, value out of those as well. Yeah. So uh, thanks everybody for joining me today. I really enjoyed being able to share this with you guys. Um, you guys can always email me. Uh, we have a Telegram group. You guys can message me directly on Telegram. Um, we have a Facebook group. You guys can message me there. I mean, I'm uh, fully accessible in many, many different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. And then if anybody has any questions about anything I went over today, uh, we'll have a little quick Q&A session. And then I'll let you guys get ready for the uh, markets to open. So thanks again for everybody for joining. I've been Ryan with ZenFX. Take care, trade well. I'll see you in the charts. And as always, let's get those pips. All right, take care, guys.